What's up, everyone? I am Jesse. We're Game Over Jesse. Here with us is our two special guests because Chablima is not with us. Uh, she sadly passed away after drowning in cheese pizza. Yes, that's what happens. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Uh, so to replace her, because one person wouldn't be able to do it, we have Gibbs in the top oh. right. <laughs> and we, we, <laughs> we're getting to you. Uh, and then we have Maya. <laughs> and uh, of course, we have Ilya, Daniel, and the, the ghost of Tubes. The ghost so, of tubes. Yes. this is Friends with Friends. Everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Friends with Friends, where we answer your questions about friends and. Um, other. And other 90s sitcoms. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How I Met Your Mother. Oh. Best show ever. Alright, so uh, if you want to have your question guaranteed to be on the show because we're kind of running out of time because Ilya has to leave soon, we have Jacob, Michael, Elmer, Bootleg Boy, Gus, Justin, That One Pancake, Key of Time, 15, Monica, Casey, Link Use the Triforce, Megan, Lunarium, Robbie, Shadow to Us, Rusty, Lovable Christy, maybe a few other Patreon supporters. I haven't updated it in a while. It still says the new Patreons are new when they've been there for a few months. Yeah. Anyways, uh... We answer your Zelda questions, and sometimes, like this, when we don't have enough time to answer all of the questions, because right now we have like 50 questions in our mailbag, if you want your question guaranteed to be answered, you can become a Patreon or do like a super chat and we'll answer your question. So, our guest, Gibbs. All right, I'm first. No, you, I don't <laughs> oh. even, you don't even have it open. Never mind, that, that doesn't work out. <laughs> Ilya, since, since you may have to leave soon, Ilya. Yes. Do you have a question picked out? And of course, people watching. <laughs> uh, you can give us your question in the chat, and if it's interesting enough, we may Sorry. answer it instead of the questions already in the mailbag. So go ahead, tag whoever you want to answer your question. If it's not me, I won't be jealous. Ilya. But Yes, I have a question. Sorry, my mom like came in. She was trying to tell me dinner was ready, and I'm like, Mom! Oh, what are we having? Can I have some? Um, healthy pizza. <gasps> um, so vegan pizza. No, no. That's what's on the pizza. My, That's my, my mailbag like question. Animals too much. Ve vegans so are on the pizza. Hel healthy as in it's not made with bread. No <gasps> grain. Um, Grain so. is not inherently bad. For what you. what it's is it made out of? It's actually not supposed to go through our digestive systems. It's very bad for us. What What is it made out of? It's true. But I, I love don't bread. know, that's the scary part. <laughs> it's, okay. But I have been off of wheat for several months and I've never been healthier. Yeah, Tube says the longest podcast in history. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sorry, I have my question. It's from uh, Gamer Pawn. He says, or he asks, excuse me, do you think we will ever see side quests again like in Majora's Mask? I really enjoyed the game, uh, the time mechanic and tracking people's whereabouts um, and helping the town grow. So he likes stalking. Um, I'm just kidding. Uh, um, I would hope that there'd be another game with as wonderful and thought out side quests as Majora's Mask had. That was something that, like, when people say how much they love Majora's Masks, it's usually because of that, and the amazing side quests that they have. So, I would hope. I don't know as far as, like, do I actually think they will? I would just hope so. Especially since they said they're trying to change the mechanic of the game up. You know, that was very different from the typical. Zelda um, formula, I think. So, I would like to see it. Yeah. Everyone else thoughts on that? Pretty much exactly what <laughs> Ilya just said. <laughs> I know we have point, uh, 2.0 again. Because, <laughs> yeah. Okay, Gibbs? Uh, for me, uh, I, I want to go back to the original formula, but kind of mix it in with the new. Uh, just because I miss the actual items, the hover boots or the rock feather or something, or, or even the hook shot. I mean, I know Ooh, the climbing took right. over, the climbing took over the the hook shot, but at the same time, come on, wouldn't you like to hook shot across the whole canyon in in uh, Breath of the yes. Wild? That would have been yes. awesome. Yes, it would have been, yeah. Best. And then kind of pull off like a Spider Man or Batman move, <laughs> where you just like hook shot across and then just let go and. Uh, 
to pull out the paraglider? I mean, oh, yeah. that would have been amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Opinion, Missed say. opportunity. Yeah. Yep. But I think the reason, and I've been saying this for a long time, I think the reason that Breath of the Wild has so much stuff missing is because while they were making Breath of the Wild, they realized it was already so great. And they were like, well, how would we ever make a game better than this? So then they yeah. were like, oh, uh-huh. well, easy. Uh, we just do Breath of the Wild again, but then we add the stuff that we purposefully <laughs> left out. We have the hookshot, we have the traditional themed temples, we have the underwater exploration, all of this stuff that was missing from Breath of the Wild. And I think the reason it is missing is because they thought if we put everything in this game, there will be no way to make a better game. So we purposefully keep stuff out, like the hookshot, the underwater, the themed dungeons, so we can put it in the next game. If that is what they did, I'm very hopeful for the next game then. But then after yeah. that, it's like, where do they even go from there, you know? Yeah. So, oh. second question, and then Gibbs, you can pick yours. Um, okay. But I wanted to do this one before Illy is gone, because she was here with us when we uh, had her on. Uh, Javier Vaz- Vazquez? I don't know how to pronounce the last Vasquez? name. I apologize. Vasquez. 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 Yes. It says game over Jesse. Would you like Patricia Somerset to reprise her role of Zelda in a sequel? So when uh, Patricia, for those who don't know, is the voice actor for Zelda in Breath of the Wild. We had her and some mm-hmm. of the other voice actors from Breath of the Wild on the podcast a few months ago. And she's actually supposed to be coming back sometime soon when she releases her new album to talk about it. Uh, Mm. But when we had her on, one of the questions I had for her was if she worked on a future Zelda game as Zelda, would she want to play like Breath of the Wild 2's Zelda to explore that story and see what happened? Or how every Zelda game has like different variations of Link and Zelda, would she like to do a like game set in a different part of the timeline or like whatever that way she can still reprise her role as zelda but we know like ocarina of time zelda is very different from skyward sword zelda who is very different from breath of the wild twilight princess zelda and even tetra is like vastly different from any of the other zeldas so who is zelda by the way (laughs) some people get mad in the one video and it's like tetra is not zelda and i'm like well in the game yeah it's like the game in the game it's Ganondorf, a, Ganondorf. There's a line that where she goes, "I'm Zelda." Yeah. So <laughs> Ganondorf yeah. calls her Princess Zelda. The king calls her Princess Zelda. You see her in the princess outfit. She, you were told that she's the descendant of Zelda, and Alnuma, the person who created the game, calls her Zelda. So that's like one thing. Whenever people are like, "Well, Tetra's not Zelda," I'm like. Have you not played the game? There's literally <laughs> like the game calls her Zelda. It's like you can well, yeah, name. A, she's not though, and that, and that kid, he's not Link. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so... I think it's just because Tetra acts so different. Traditional Zelda roles of being kind yeah. of like, you know, in like damsel in distress, sort of a little bit. Well, um, Sheik isn't Ket- Zelda either. So. That's also yeah. true. Yeah, she's no. not. Yeah. I- that, that's another Spoilers. argument. But yeah, game. Zelda. Um, Patricia playing as Zelda. I actually forgot what her answer was. I think she said she'd be happy to do either, obviously. But um, yeah, I think she was like, she was like, I don't care if I'm doing a Korok, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if Nintendo's like, yeah, you want to be in Zelda, like you're like, not yes. gonna say no, <laughs> like even if it's not the role that you set out for. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. But um, what about you guys, Ilya? Well, I was thinking of something specifically on this when I I did see that question. Um, on the one hand, I say I would want her to reprise it, but not for the reasons people f- would normally think. Just because every Zelda is different, so you'd want a different voice because it's a different Zelda. Um, but I know a lot of people are going to have really trashed the voice acting. And I think what people really need to remember before they start harassing the voice actors themselves, we don't, as as an actress, we have to do what our directors say. If you want to go one direction with a character, 
and your director says, I want you to do this instead, you have no choice. They're paying you. They're mm -hmm. directing you. So for people that are like, oh, I hate how she voiced Zelda and all this stuff, it's like, that wasn't her choice. She was told how to voice Zelda. They picked her, and it was an yeah. honor for her. And, you know, not everyone's going to like it, which that's just how it is. Yeah. But... So, so yeah. my reasoning for her not wanting wanting her to be Zelda again would just be because it's a different Zelda. I respect as an actress so much what she did with the role because she was working under what she was told to do. Mm -hmm. And they picked her. Yeah. So another thing yeah. that some people don't like I guess they aren't aware of because they don't know how voice acting and stuff works, but if you're voice acting like a cartoon, an anime, a video game, whatever, um like there's been a lot of people's like, oh, I don't agree with this line, or like they'll say like, well, this translation of this thing isn't necessarily completely accurate, and it's like, there's you have to match the syllables of like the mouth movements when yep, someone's talking. So it's like if a direct translation from the Japanese audio, like if the Japanese version is like two or three sentences, but it can be summed up in an English translation of like three or four words then it's going to be like three or four words and then the character is going to keep talking during that cutscene for so many times. So what they have to do is stretch out those three or four words and to like make it out to be not just the same length of sentences, but they need to have like exactly so many words with exactly so many syllables so it looks right whenever they're talking. So... That's how you get some things shortened or some things are changed because there's not really a direct translation from that. But anyways, yeah. uh, Gibbs. For me, I would like to, to hear her back in one of the games. I mean, as whether it would be flashbacks or something like that, whether it's a direct sequel or not, <clears throat> that's besides the point, but she did she did a great job voicing Zelda. I mean, there is that connection as far as from the moment you wake up as Link and you hear her for the first time. Um, it might be just that the game was just that impacting because of the the voice acting in ones. Um, but, I mean, it's just really good point that the franchise is going towards. Uh, adding that um, voice acting, and if <clears throat> if uh, Nintendo's trying to take Zelda kind of like a Kingdom Hearts, you know, type of way where they have a consecutive sequels, which they've never done be before or technically, um, that would be great to have all these uh, voice actors back. I mean, the Rook was just amazing. Oh on my the God. Yeah, One my of my favorite, favorite. voices. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Joe Hernandez. It's and, funny uh, when you Volley talk to Joe as well. Too. And uh, like like when talking to Sean, voice for Volley, I could hear it like, okay, yeah, he is the actor that plays for Volley. But then you talk to Joe and you're like, this guy is both, <laughs> he, he, he does not in his normal speaking voice sound like either Daruk yeah. or Yonobo. And it's just, I don't know, it's... uh. Well, even it, Sean it really goes as to the show. Great oh, yeah, the great, yes, yeah. It is like it really goes to show you, like all these actors and how good of a range they have as well. Because even Patricia, she doesn't really sound like no. Zelda does, right? Like that was what, that was what they came up with and what they directed her and how they, the the performance they pulled out of her was that. But like, she just has a very, I don't know, um, a very different voice IRL. So yeah. 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 One of one mm. of the things that they did was bring, give her that uh, English accent, which I understand why they're trying to do it. They're trying to convey that regal attitude from her, but at the at the same time, it's just maybe you could have been done without it. You don't need the accent to convey that. But again, that's completely a different point. But I think it would be really good to continue that. Um, uh, the voice acting. I, I think it's really good for the for the franchise. I, I mean, hmm. yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm like the only like one of the only people who like did not hate all the voice acting. Like I I don't think I disliked any of the performances. Um, 
Uh, especially like I think one that's overlooked, the kings. The king yes. Of yes. His voice I was gonna is say so that. good. Yeah. I am like, king Roam Boss for Ramos. Like, he was the director. Yeah. He was oh, the one was that directed really? everyone else. Yeah. He, oh, he well, he did a great. fantastic job as well. Yeah. And, and yeah, Daruk, Daruk was absolutely my favorite voice in the game. Uh, just like he he embodied like like a hero's voice. I'm like, yep, that's a Goron voice. <laughs> like 100% yes. like, yes, that's the go giant Goron champion. Yeah, that's his voice. Like it just, <laughs> there was no, never a doubt. Like that, it was just, it was way too perfect. Um, but yeah, I know like, like people harp on and on about it, but I just feel like I played through the yeah. game. I enjoyed it all. I don't feel like I had any negative from any of the voice actors. Um, I, I'm just like, I don't know. I just I don't see like I I see people complaining about, it, but I don't see their point. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. There was it's, uh, there was the thing where um, when I was emailing and talking and messaging mm -hmm. to the different people, and like I was like, okay, who do we have on first? Obviously Zelda because it's she's the title t titular character or whatever and then we had Job. whenever it came to looking up um i almost said ravi <laughs> uh ravali or ravioli as we ravioli. yeah we um i was like do i really want him on because like i hated that character but then Aww. when we had sean on it was, was completely so great yeah it was yeah. like completely different where he was like so fun and energetic and ravali like in my head i'm like he sounds like an ass because like just, yeah it's, I think that's the mark of a really good voice actor yeah, you know, because yeah. you have that ability to make people hate you even though you're actually yeah. a decent human yeah. being yeah so that's you know? yeah yeah oh totally point. and uh well no that's let's say like it, it goes to show you that range as well also like learning that oh, he, yeah. the death of tree as well is like holy cow this guy's got like like in you <laughs> just like looking at him as well it's just like not the voice you would expect to come out of that skinny guy you know <laughs> I, don't, I don't know it's, but uh no it's it's like these are people doing a job i don't know and it's um and they're they're very talented they're really good at what they're what they're doing mm -hmm. um, yeah yeah all right um mm -hmm. gibbs do you want to pick the next question oh do we, I? we can yeah, try sure. to get through the these next three <laughs> quickly so everyone sure. can leave. Well, I was actually probably going to go ahead oh. and have to bow out. All right. Bye, Aaliyah. So, go back to the It was really nice family. meeting you. Enjoy your yeah. pizza. For anyone meeting that doesn't yourself. know, I got rid of my Twitter, so don't try following me on there. <laughs> oh, that's why I couldn't tag you earlier. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. Twitter's a toxic place, so I just got off of it. So, just for me personally, but okay. Bye, Bye guys. Bye, Aaliyah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All right. All right. Now that she's oh. gone, we can talk about her. All right. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's what Daniel said about you when you stood up. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Well, for my question, I'm going to go with Norma Norman Abelera. Ab I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, why, do why don't all the links just pass down their items? they have obtained on their journeys to mm. the next hero oh yeah and, we did this one last week too but yeah oh, i want to hear what you say i want to hear you your oh, answer well, i mean just just simply i mean the links are not directly descended for, from uh, from each other so there is no point it's better to return it to another dungeon or the dungeon where they were found in yeah. Point simple as that. I mean, in my opinion, I don't know what you guys have to say about that. No, it, it, it makes sense. That's pretty much exactly like, that. Like. When, when you're in, like, the Water Temple from Ocarina of Time, for instance, like, if you take that long shot from there, if someone else ever goes back in there, they're going to have a hard time making their way around. Or, like, the, the Megaton Hammer from Ocarina of Time's Fire Temple. It's like, if you don't have that, you're not going to be able to like open half the doors in the place so it makes sense to be like okay well i'm done with this now i have no use for it so i'm just going to put it back where i found it like um that's kind of the the thought behind finding the hero's bow like from majora's mask and then mm -hmm. finding it in the uh fire temple in twilight princess right yeah yep because it's yeah 
Like, well, Link doesn't need it anymore, so he took it to a place where it could be used. Mm -hmm. But it's like also these, like, I think that's what we mentioned last time. It's kind of the exception to the rule of like, yeah. not being able to. But, like, the games are hundreds of years apart, typically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How would he pass it on? That doesn't make sense. It's, you just yeah. get damp to give, like, the, the ghost of damp. <laughs> Every All of your items just take it to damp or dompe and be like, hey, uh, <laughs> I was since... gonna say, you... <laughs> is, is that how you pronounce his name? <laughs> Have I been saying it wrong? <laughs> but, I, just, I just, I can't imagine meeting guys like, I'm damp. I'm like, I thought that's it was nice. I thought he was dampy. I would say dom dampe or dompe is always how I, it's what I said. like before. French. I'm damp. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, it's imagine me the guy goes up. I'm damp. I'm like, well, I, I, I always hand, think because like the graveyard is like you know he's yeah. digging in the dirt. So it, and yeah. then like it's raining there sometimes. So like everything's really oh. damp. So in my head, I'm like, they're probably just named him after like oh. the location. So but he's then they made it. it. Yeah, but then they made it like <laughs> they put like a French spin on it. Like Mike, uh, who named Groose. We we had him on the channel a long time ago. He worked on Skyward Sword. He's oh, wow. they were all like sitting in the room at Nintendo and was, like the only new like Aonuma was just like they all have to be named after birds. So they just like sit in the room all day trying to come up with bird names for people and then Groose got named after Goose. Groose is on the loose. Yeah. So when I was a kid, I thought that Groose was gonna be like Ganondorf. I was like, I swear he's gonna be Ganondorf. Well, that's the theory that like he went yeah. on to be like the first Gerudo. Yeah. Caruso. I remember that being like, a thing. But when yeah. I was a kid, I was like, it makes sense. There's Link, Zelda, and Ganondorf all in place. So I was yes. like, that doesn't make any sense. What am I thinking? But it does make sense though, because like yeah. whenever they were all cursed, like Link and Zelda were cursed because they helped. But also, Groose was the one who like shot a cannon. At demise, so that's true. That's true. Like it mm -hmm. would make sense for him to get too. But anyways, uh, <laughs> what what are we talking about? <clears throat> about the items not that's being passed. Oh yeah, exactly. oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> there's you can't keep track of like twenty different things over the course of hundreds of years. So yeah. it kind of makes sense to, to put them away for safekeeping. Yeah. Yeah. Like the only yeah, time, the only time awesome. that could happen is the Ocarina of Time to Twilight Princess, because like it's yeah. the grandson or great whatever. But then still, yeah. that's like a hundred years or hundreds. What were you saying, but Daniel? If he does leave, like you were saying, if he goes back and put back in the dungeon or something, and that is in a way, like because you always find the item, the exact item that you need to get through that dungeon. So in a sense. That could exactly be what's going on. He just puts it back. He's done with it. He's like, okay, if if anyone comes here, they're gonna need this. So I'll just <laughs> like leave that there. Um, yeah, so kind of weird, kind of amusing thought. I just I imagine like going back and planting all these items. He's like, this this dungeon has a lot of huge gaps. I'm just gonna leave these hover boots in this chest here. Right? <laughs> I was gonna say, I think the only uh, the only link that has a uh, found items in the temples is the Skyward Sword Link, except for maybe like two items. I think, well, Zelda but, 2, you don't really find yeah. items because you have to get, there's not really an item system in the same way, but that's kind of a weird black sheep game mechanic. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know, I think he would be the only one that. What about at Link to the Past? Link to the Past, you do item, like, find items in the dungeons. Okay. Um, a Link well, Between Worlds, you don't, because there's Ravio <laughs> to sell them. He to stole you. them all. <laughs> he stole them from the dungeons. It makes sense. He's, <laughs> so, he's, he's, he's like, he's, I'm going to make money from this guy. Maybe he already went on an adventure through all these dungeons. Yeah. And he kept everything, and he's like, well, what am I going to do with these now? <laughs> make some make some cash. <laughs> uh, Maya, do you have a question? Yes. Okay, hold on. And then a after you, on. Daniel will have okay. the final question. The final question. Yeah. Da -da -da -da. Also, right. uh, um, <laughs> when you came on the podcast, you're probably like, I didn't think three hours of my life would be sucked away. Last week when we had Miss Click, it was literally less than half 
of the length of this one but on this really? one yeah like it was an hour and a half with her oh but then God. like this one we kept getting sidetracked so this is fine i i feel like so i feel great like i wasn't i wasn't planning on like being on the podcast for that long but i wasn't planning on being on a podcast at all today so i was like all right i guess it's gonna jump on and we'll see how long it goes and i i've, I've had a great time talking to everyone so i don't mind at all um the question was from uh, J two zero zero nine two zero one zero, in 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 chat, uh, and he asked, uh, "What are your thoughts on a Zelda game with a Shadow of Mordor like story, where uh, where there are factions of the various species around Hyrule, plus an impending war, and using Breath of the Wild systems for stealth?" Um. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I was like. Well, I think that that's a really interesting idea. There's a reason why I don't think they've taken, um, I don't think they've taken Zelda or many Nintendo games at all in that kind of direction because it's already been done. It's already being done. And Shadow of War, uh, Shadow of War, Shadow of Mordor, those games were really, really successful. But Zelda as a franchise has been really, really successful, right? So it's not like they have anything to prove. They can just continue doing their own thing. Now, I hope that they grow on that uh, that own thing and make it better. I would love for there to be kind of a system where I don't know if you guys have played Shadow of War, Shadow of Mordor, um, but if you get into like a side quest or something and you have like a companion that like goes along with you and he's kind of like running besides you and stuff and that's never really been done well in a zelda game as far as i can tell at least none of the 3d ones where it's like you literally have a companion following you around for like just one mission or just one quest like i was thinking how cool it would be if in breath of the wild dlc once um spoilers in case you haven't played breath of the wild but once zelda is saved I was I was hoping that um, you know you guys would be able to go around together, maybe do things together, but that was never really a thing. Um, and so I think that there are some aspects of the game that I would really like to see in a Zelda game, but I don't think it needs it necessarily because the game has already been proven to be successful, or the game franchise has proven it provenly. <laughs> yeah, that was that was really good. I do want to say with uh, the new Shadow of War, there is um, I haven't played it, but I remember like where they were like showing off the game before it released. The developers, mm -hmm. they one of the times they were showing off, uh, they were putting a big focus on like when he's aiming the arrow or something, and like time slows down for him. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, huh. It's almost as if another game that was really successful came out <laughs> had this same gameplay mechanic. Hmm. So instead of Zelda taking aspects from Shadow of Mordor or Shadow of War, it seems like it's the other way. The other around. way. Which yeah, I think that Zelda has been such a successful series of games and such like you know it has such a huge fan base and everything why wouldn't games want to take some of the aspects that are in um zelda and use them for their own games as long as they have them in their own way you know obviously if it's a direct copy you know it's going to be a problem but if you know you see something a mechanic that you like in a zelda game and you use that in another game because you're like everybody like that that's just smart you know yeah so but you... i think it works both ways you know just because they did it first doesn't mean that you know, like, for example, when Ionuma was starting development before even really messing around with Breath of the Wild, he played Skyrim, right? And he was like, oh my god, Skyrim's an amazing game, no wonder why this sold like crazy. And I was, you know, no much more successful than um, Skyward Sword, you know? And, uh, and then they used Skyrim as kind of a basis to form breath of the wild that open world kind of feeling that was because they loved that in skyrim you know so i think that's really cool yeah did you play shadow mm. of war gibbs i did not but however i did see a lot of it um would recommend great game i should probably try it out once i'm done with the semester of school but anyway <laughs> um some of the things that i that does call out from that game is the maturity rating for, from it then that's all the bloody battles and how it all mm -hmm. affects that you go and take care of one general and then another one takes over, you know, instead of him. 
as it is, Zelda games are hard, hard to uh, keep track of uh, in storyline and lore. And then if you were to add even more lore with, you know, I guess it could work out, you know, uh, kind of having like take uh, take plays maybe during the Gerudo Hylian War, maybe. I don't know. I think that would be a pretty cool um, story to uh, follow and, you know, expand if mm -hmm. if if somebody were to uh, kind of take it into that direction. But at the same time, a lot of the Nintendo games, you really don't ki kill human uh, characters. They either disappear or they vanish or they... Uh, um, or they uh, go to sleep, technically. Uh, Except for Master like, Koga. Like the Gerudos in Ocarina of Time. He does himself in, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's that's true. true. That's technically but, true. Yeah, no, they, they, you can shoot a Gerudo in the face with your bow and arrow, and they just get knocked out. <laughs> yeah, you get the little stars <laughs> over there. Accurate. Yeah. You're like, mm, okay, sure. <laughs> that That's all that did. So... So it would intrigue me how it would work out. I mean, trying to eliminate generals in a war. So maybe if they were kind of like Bokoblins or something, I don't know. Yeah. But even that, the Bokoblins are King not that King Boblin from Twilight oh, Princess. Oh, yeah, like yeah. They, they had like that kind of general, maybe. Or maybe like the way, you know, in um, Hyrule Wars. Not, it's not quite the same, but uh, in Hard Wars, there's sometimes those like little mini submissions. It's like you got to el eliminate like outpost captain or something, and it's like a bigger Lazalfos. That's I, don't, I, don't, I guess I could see it making making it work that way, but then they don't seem like the kind of enemies that would be like generals in a war. You know? Yeah, that's what so I. It's, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I was no, gonna no, say that's bad. what that's what I really like about when you are on your way to the Arbiter's Grounds and Twilight Princess, and it's like all of the different camps of the Bokoblins? Bulblins? The Bulbins. The Bulbins, Bulbins, yeah. What are they? Bulbins. Those ones were Bulbins. Bulbins. Yeah. Mm. So, that it was kind of cool on that because you would have the ones that are like really high up on the, the outpost things, and then they had... Uh, like some of them were riding around on boars and stuff, so really cool. Um, Daniel, would you like to give us our final question? Yes. Um, I had one picked out, and now I was looking at other ones. Uh oh. <laughs> what is your I favorite ice cream organized. flavor? Or is it? Who is your favorite co-host on the Highly? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, that, that that actually is one of the questions here, but that was not. <laughs> is one it of really? Too well. It actually is. <laughs> uh, Who's your favorite? Actually, it was a good uh, kind of in-depth question too. Gibbs is my favorite. Oh, thank you. I don't consider myself a co-host. It's the I'm beard. Just <laughs> okay. Uh, so the question is by Deku the Boss, and. They ask, so, who are, this is a two-part question, who are the sages in Twilight Princess? Were they just there for the purpose of Ganondorf's execution? And also, how did Armagome get a hold of the mirror shard? It was a, it was a bit of a two-part question. Um, I don't think it's ever, like, 100% said, but I always assume the sages in Twilight Princess were the sages that... You so like the the ancient sages, so the group that Raru is a part of. So, um, in Ocarina of Time, you have to awaken new sages because those ones died. But in Twilight Princess's timeline, they didn't actually end up dying. Well, the one did, but <laughs> um, so you don't have to awaken a new group of sages in that game. They're already there, and that's sort of like their um, ethereal sort of form that they can take on. Um, yeah, that, that's that's always what... I don't know if it's 100% confirmed about that. That was always what I assumed. That's my headcanon, at the very least. And uh, how did Armagomo get a hold of the Mirror Shard? Uh, Zant was screwing around. That's all I got. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so, like, Goma and Ocarina of Time hmm. was inside the Deku Tree because Ganondorf came and cursed the Deku Tree. 
and that's why there's all the other spiders and the spider webs and everything inside. So with Armaguma, I would imagine it's something very similar to where, like, Ganondorf... What? 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 <laughs> Hold on. Messed up. So... I, it seems fine. Yeah. yeah. Looks fine. This just in. <laughs> All right. So yeah. Breaking um, news. <laughs> Zant and Ganondorf. Um, like Zant got his powers from Ganondorf, so I imagine that's why Armogoma is there. But why does the spider have the shard? Like the same reason Reasons. everyone else does that you fight. Yeah. I don't. I never thought about it. I don't know. It could go. We could. We could do it like that Metroid Prime sort of uh, explanation, where um, in the Prime trilogy, there's these the, the Leviathan seeds or like the asteroids that impact, and um, basically that the radiation attracts things to it. Uh, so it could be kind of a similar thing, where basically like it could have just found it and like because of the magic of the mirror, it got like it was like attracted to it, so it wanted to protect it. Um, something like that. I don't know. Because like we see the, the way ring. Lizetta, who is the Yeti, mm -hmm. like, found, just, she had just found the mirror, and then she was, like, obsessed with it. it. Yeah, obsessed with it. My yeah, precious. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. And so, like, it, it could have that same effect on other creatures that are not as sentient as the Yetis, and they don't have that sort of self-control to just lock it away, because they, they're just... Monsters, they get obsessed basically. by it, and yeah. then they're, they yeah. don't have the same capability of like talking to you, so you can't really tell, mm -hmm. you know, as yeah. easily with everyone. Yeah. That's um, that's a great well, explanation. Yeah. Was it Ganondorf Good, the I one who originally <laughs> uh, broke the mirror shield, or or the mirror shield, the, uh, the Twilight, uh, Twilight, mirror. Twilight? Yeah. Um, was it Ganondorf, or I thought he or was they... sealed, and then they broke it so that no one could get out. I don't know. They were like, like the sages broke it because they were like, oh, stuff's going down. We gotta, we gotta stop this. <laughs> um, mm. I don't know. Was it the sages that broke it? I yeah. think it was because I'm pretty. Yeah. I can't remember exactly. It's been so <laughs> long, but I think that there was. <laughs> I, I, I think they did it on purpose so that like you wouldn't be able to make the mirror anymore. Or at least and maybe sure. I'm wrong about that, but I thought that was a thing. Yeah. But then like because... if they break it and then they send it to all these different places, then it yeah. attracts these monsters. Protect, yeah, but <laughs> you like, know? The, Works the... for me. <laughs> so like the some of the medallions and stuff were like mm -hmm. being held by the sages. But the temples were there to like worship the sages or like to honor them or whatever. Yeah. So, so the sages could have taken because the temples all belong to each of them so they could have taken a shard each and hid it inside their temples because all the temples they're not necessarily churches <laughs> like they're all basically dungeons so just like not very much that's temple like about any of the temples oh, really? like maybe the forest temple in Ocarina of Time I feel like is the most temple-like of the temples. Yeah. But yeah, they're not really temple Yeah. Okay, the Zelda wiki says that Sent was the one who broke the the Mirror of Twilight. Okay. Because that, that would explain how he is able to come back into the real... into the world. Hmm. I mean, because sense. if it's broken, if it's broken, nobody can come through, right? That's the mm -hmm. whole purpose at the end of the game when uh, Midna uh, shatters it completely into oblivion. Mm -hmm. uh, but my thing is, okay, if Sant broke it, do they just spread, or did he purposely leave them somewhere to not... to be guarded by monsters? Yes. Which I, th I think he would have done that. And... Well, purposely because... Of Probably Ganondorf was like, okay, you break it, you take it here and here, whatever, you know, so he doesn't get them. I mean, pure, uh, I think that would be its point. That that would be why Armor Gama, Goma would have them. So, I think that could explain, explain it all. 
but I don't yeah. know how right we, uh, Zelda Wiki is. Depends which one. Uh, is it Zelda like, uh... Uh, Blue? Gamepedia. Yeah, I, I think that one is, um, generally pretty good. As far as the Zelda wikis that exist go. <laughs> so, they're pre usually pretty good about sourcing, or like, citing their sources, though. So. Yes. Alright, I guess that's cool. That's everything. Alright, um, cool. Gibbs, who are you? What are you doing here? Why are you... Hello, who? everyone. Uh, well, I am Gibbs. I am a admin mod in, uh, in the Game Over Jesse Discord group. Um, you can always catch me on there. Uh, we can have... I sometimes partake into the Zelda theories. Um, and uh, you can have conversation and find pictures of memes and whatnot. Glats. <laughs> memes? <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say Balsed, but no, those are not loud. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so, yeah. Um, People in the we, chat earlier were talking about Linket instead oh, of no, Balsed. That, that's mm. not. That's not. Okay. <laughs> that's not right now. <laughs> So uh, you can always find me on there, have a conversation with me. I have been uh, trying to get myself on streaming, but this semester is not that great for me. So you can always find me on um, Twitter at Mr. Gibbs, Mr. Gibbs with a Z at the end. Um, you can also find me on Twitch, which would be the Mr. Gibbs once I start streaming on there, hopefully sometime soon, um, because I need to de-stress from school. Anyway. <laughs> All right, Maya, who are you? What are you doing here? Why should we care about you? It's a great question, Jeff. <laughs> All right, well, hi, I'm Maya. Uh, I am a Twitch streamer, just started streaming about a month ago. It's been going super great. You can find me at uh, www.twitch.mayadanny. I was gonna say that <laughs> twitch.tv um no but uh i've been streaming and i met game over jesse i mean i watched his videos and then he added me on discord and i was like how do you even know i exist because that's insane and uh we ended up getting to invite me on the podcast he's jumped by the stream a few times so um now i'm a part of his discord i hang out there you can usually at me and I will always be online because I never sleep and never leave my house and I, I play video games and I do stupid stuff a lot of the time so yeah it's it's been good that's why you should care yeah <laughs> all right Daniel who are you I don't know <laughs> Daniel, <let's> really know <laughs> do, do we really know ourselves um, apparently now you all know me <laughs> really well. Very so, well. Yeah, very well. <laughs> friends um, with friends. Right now right <laughs> is not the time to have an existential <laughs> crisis, please. It was okay. earlier. <laughs> uh, um, but no, I'm Daniel. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Capt Bergerson. Um, and also recently started on Twitch myself, uh, in addition to doing all this business. Uh, so you can tune in Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Uh, usually I'll announce it on Twitter, like give some advance notice there but uh yeah i also have a website called burgersonmedia.com and that's where i talk about cheeseburgers that's a, all the burger reviews it's it's a vegan <laughs> or vegetarian perspective on cheeseburgers <laughs> this is not very much perspective we have there but um <laughs> uh, but yeah no this posts lots of like little artsy fart projects that i work on so you can check that out as well, and I would I would enjoy you doing. I would like uh, you can do that. I would like that. <laughs> they, so, we understand. they can also pay you to make intros and stuff. This hey. is also true. If you need a little YouTube channel intro jingle or something, uh, yes, you can pay me to do things like that for you. Um, and you can see an example of this. I Jesse's gone through a few intros. I've made a couple of them for him, not the current one he's using. I made the one for Ilya Rose's YouTube channel, uh, Nintendo Prime's YouTube channel. Um, I did have one for Zelda Informer. They don't use it anymore because Zelda Informer is now defunct, but <laughs> there was there was a really good one that I did for that channel. Um, yeah, there's, Champion there's Ashley. There's some examples. Oh, I did Champion Ashley's as well. Yep. 
Um, I have like a whole little demo reel on my uh, on that website. So, yes, if you want to do that, I will Does do it all. Your own YouTube fun. channel? Be... Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I have a YouTube channel called <laughs> NSHG Films. Uh, you've probably seen me in the chat chatting. Um, I haven't posted very much on there lately, uh, but it's kind of a shared channel between myself and a couple of people I know from knowing them because I know you them know in them. real life. Yeah. So, <laughs> not, not on the <laughs> um, So, yeah, you can go check that out. And uh, I'm everywhere, basically, is what I'm saying. <laughs> so. And Jesse. Huh? Who are you? Who are you? Um, Who are you? I am Jesse, I think. I um Hi. What's 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 up? Riveting. What are what are what are we doing here? Sixty nine thousand subscribers, there it is. <laughs> now that it's sixty nine thousand, you have to wink after you say it. Oh, sixty nine thousand. Yeah, I made a. Whenever we we passed sixty nine thousand, I made a post on Twitter that's like I'm I'm obligated to make a sex joke. Yeah, I think I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yes. So yeah, I'm Jesse. I everything Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, everything is slash Game Over Jesse. Uh, join our Discord. There's a link right here. For the people watching thank you to like the the 60 people that came earlier to watch now there's half of you here 32 of you thank you all for watching thank you gibbs for, oh, you for joining me. on for the mailbag thank you maya for joining on for the rest of the podcast <laughs> uh thank you tubes for going out and getting drinks with Daniel <laughs> last night, which presented us with the opportunity to have these two on. Oops. Without thank you. Inviting us. Thank you. Inviting you to yeah. international. Yeah, Daniel. <laughs> you won't get married to me. You won't even invite me to get beer. You, you can come for drinks, but you gotta hop on a plane first. So I just... <laughs> uh, you were in the chat when I made those flags. It's a six six hundred dollar. Beer. Yeah, Oof. that's a, that better be a good drink if you're gonna. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. No uh, can't guarantee. Not to gamer porn in the chat says good podcast guys. So yeah, Thanks. everyone, thank you guys for watching. I apologize, it was three and a half hours. You could have watched Harry Potter or something instead, but One you didn't. You One chose of the extended, extended editions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you chose to be here, so thank you guys for that. Um, now go watch Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Buy the two hundred dollar four K Blu-ray set and watch that. All right. I'm on it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Bye everyone that's watching. Bye. Thank you all for watching. Bye. Bye. And we're not recording. Hey everyone, it's me again, Elia Rose. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video. And you know what? If you're a fan of videos like this, you should totally subscribe and give this video a like and comment below to let us know what type of videos you would like to see us create in the future. And if you would really like to support all of us here at the Game Over Jesse channel, please consider purchasing a Game Over Jesse t-shirt or becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash gameoverjesse, where you can receive many rewards, such as getting shoutouts, having any topic or theory that you select discussed on the podcast or made into its own video, having your question answered, joining on as a guest on the podcast, and playing with us during our Twitch live streams at twitch.tv slash gameoverjesse, and much, much more.